Welcome, we're here at the English Language Teacher Educator Conference 2014 in Hyderabad and I have with me today um, Nivedita Beredo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, thank you for taking the time to, um, to come and speak to us. And I'm sure you're very busy. Yeah, no, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> um, Nivedita, you, you work at the Azim Premji University. Yes. Um, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about, about your, your role? in the university? Yeah. Um, my role uh, is actually in the University Resource Centre. The University Resource Centre is uh, a connect between theory and practice. At the university we have uh, uh, various courses um, along with our MA development and MA education course uh, but uh, we also work uh, in the field in uh, several states. Uh, we work in about seven eight states presently and uh, wish to expand our work. Uh, we work with uh, the government uh, to bring about quality education and um, my role is to uh, look after uh, the development of uh, field workers in English language and language. Okay, uh, so okay. sounds very interesting. Yeah. I'm very busy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the the theme of, of, of the conference this year is um, is, is innovation essentially. Yeah. Um, innovation in, in, in English language education. What's what's your interpretation of, of that theme, and, um, and and how do you see it within a, within a, the Indian context? Yeah. Uh, as I see it, uh, innovation uh, in English language education, I would look at it in a larger context of language. Because when we talk of English language, we talk of it uh, as one of the languages of India. And looking at it as in a multilingual context, uh, I would think that uh, we uh, would la should, la should begin from uh, the classroom and the teacher. There is a lot of innovation that is going on and uh, in the conference I saw many examples of such uh, incidents of small classroom innovation being uh, brought into the larger stage and uh, thereby the uh, teachers who did these innovations were uh, uh, changed people. They uh, understood, developed and uh, their, their confusions were uh, given a context and uh, also a kind of pat on the back, um, just being here, talking to people, looking at their problems, situating them in the larger context made a lot of difference to these teachers. And I've been following and watching these teachers throughout the conference and I felt that was really wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, no, it has. It's been it's been amazing, hasn't it? I think. Yeah. Certainly for me, coming here yeah. from outside of the country and, and seeing what's what's happening and yeah. seeing speaking to people at the conference is yeah, is, yeah it's very uh, very motivating. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. In your talk, you talked about um, co-development, and I was wondering if if you could summarise perhaps for people who maybe aren't sure what what that means, yeah. if you could summarise what what that is in in, in the context of the, of the projects that you've been working on. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, thought of this idea of co-development. It's not a new idea. It is a part of continuing professional development and it is part of a collaborative learning process. So it's an idea which has, uh, I think, which is uh, now uh, come of age. And uh, this uh, is an idea is when, uh, when a group of people have uh, a single aim and sit together and uh, learn from each other. What they actually do is reading, writing, discussion, reflection, critical reflection, but go back to the field, work on their projects, come back, discuss their projects and uh, get feedback from members. So a co-development process is a bottom-up process in the sense that the choice of what to do, the choice of how to do, the choice of when to do, and the choice of how uh, you create knowledge out of it remains with the group. Uh, although uh, the general area of um, what we are supposed to do uh, and what we are going to do in uh, the um, education sector is decided. We want a just, equitable, sustainable society. We, we want children who are learning in a constructive manner. Uh, we want 
classrooms where there is joy and learning both so uh, we all agree upon these uh, ideals and with these ideals in mind of a democratic society where every child questions what is happening where every child thinks reflectively where there is collaborative work happening where uh, there is creativity and space for innovation this is what we all agree upon so within that larger broad framework to decide what you want to do in the in your own subject area mm -hmm. Na naturally uh, if you have that chance and have that group it becomes a very creative process mm -hmm. oh, sounds it sounds very interesting yeah. okay i know in, in your talk um I mean, what you've just been talking about is, is as you said a very much a, a bottom up approach um and there's the, the, the suggestion in your, in your talk looks at how, how top-down models continue to, to dominate. Yeah. Um, do, you, um, do you see a place for a top-down approach? Um, and if so, where, where, where do you see this, this approach fitting in? Yeah, uh, there is a place for a top-down approach and a bottom-up approach. It can't be bottom-up by itself. It can't be top-down by itself. We have to uh, marry the two and uh, there has to be an understanding in doing that. Uh, there is a place for uh, thinking about the larger principles of what you are doing and how you are doing. Uh, and that is ha it happens in our co-development. Well, uh, people uh, who are leading the process do think about the larger principles and if we are, if we are uh, somewhere stepping out of the larger principles uh, and the area in which uh, in the area in which we are working we do have to get back in a structured manner secondly processes need to be structured and there the top down approach does come in somebody has to if we uh, we decide that every friday we are going to have a teleconferencing for uh, discussing our areas um, of work and uh, uh, suppose we have created modules and we have piloted the modules and we want to discuss them every friday if we have decided that somebody has to anchor the whole thing so uh, top down doesn't go away just because bottom up starts a bottom up is autonomous and uh, any development any uh, reflection is after all we said that it happens through motivation and we gave a very large uh, amount of importance in this conference also to motivation uh, and uh, personal choice so those are the things that come from bottom up while uh, structures and how how things should happen uh, whether we are uh, whether our philosophy uh, which we agreed upon initially is continued with our practice should be uh, should also uh, be monitored to an extent uh, it is not a monitoring process in the sense of the usual understanding of monitoring but just to understand where we are and how we go from there Okay. So, so yes, yeah, so it's not monitoring the, 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 the teachers themselves to make sure they're doing the right things. It's more about that the, the, the process is, 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 is working and is, is, is working yeah, yeah. How, it, how it should do. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Interesting. Um, obviously, we, we're in the middle of, or well, we're on the last day of, of, of this year's this conf conference. Um, just thinking ahead a little bit to, to next year, are there any themes that you would like to see covered in, in the 2015? Yeah. Teacher Educator Conference. Yeah, I had thought of about four themes. Uh, at present, I think the most important theme would be uh, multilingual approaches and realities in India. Because we are talking about um, English in the context of multilingualism and, uh, the, uh, and teachers are at a loss. I've seen um, I've uh, been to many of uh, the presentations. Uh, I have found that teachers are at a loss of uh, understanding the whole concept of uh, how uh, does English language fit in into our multilingual reality or uh, do we still follow the immersion approaches that we have been following and how does a multilingual approach translate into reality. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be uh, one very good theme. Uh, another theme could be reflective practice. Uh, if we could concentrate on reflective practice and uh, its connection with innovation, uh, we would perhaps get a lot of small innovations in the field 
and uh, we could uh, bring them to the larger table of situations, contexts and theories. And we could see that whether these innovations really uh, are, uh, uh, can translate into theories mm. or uh, do confirm theories. Okay. So we've been talking about how, uh, well, th somebody makes theories and somebody uh, uh, does the practice. Now, let's take innovations from the field and look at how they match up with the theories yeah. or uh, how they create a new theory. Okay. Maybe the next conference will create a completely new theory of learning. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, um, Nivedita. That's very kind of you to, to come and to speak to us. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, okay. Paul. Thank you. This was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Great.